Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about INTJ body language. And okay, the first thing you want to know is INTJs are a careful mix of composure and ambition. That means these are the things you want to first look for in INFJ, the INTJ's body language. So first things first, INTJs are composed. That means they carefully contain their body language, their expressions and how they talk. When you listen to an INTJ speak, their speeching, speaking pattern is carefully selected. They build up a start and an end point. It looks like what they are saying has a beginning and a clear end and a clear midpoint. They structure their own speech, their own rhythm, their own tempo. They softly, subtly escalate towards a set direction. It appears as if they have a goal. It appears as if they have an ambition. That means also when an INTJ looks at you, you feel as if you are being looked at with a purpose. The INTJ has a plan for you. The INTJ has a goal or some kind of ambition or some kind of agenda. So a lot of time the INTJ due to the influence of introverted intuition can come off as secretive. When you read an INTJ it's hard to pick up on exactly what that agenda is. What is it the INTJ is really trying to do? INTJs they have this way of looking at the word world with cunning, with vision and with uh, some sense of clarity. It looks like they know what they are doing. It looks like they have an end goal planned with everything they say and everything they do. Nothing they say is there for frivolous purposes. There is no embellishment. INTJs, they don't exaggerate their speech. They don't just put things there because it feels nice or looks nice. They don't just make a gesture because that gesture uh, is culturally valid or appropriate. They do it with a purpose and that is uh, they seek to influence or control themselves and their environment to a necessary aim. So when looking at the INTJ, what you first want to pick up on is their gaze. Typically the INTJ has a relaxed gaze. That means their eyelids are relaxed. Their gaze looks at you with impassiveness without strong uh, sense of alertness without a strong presence. This is due to the lack of extroverted sensing. When INTJs go into extroverted sensing, they look alert, they look shaky, and they look stressed, they look like they are losing control. When INTJs have a gaze, when they stare at you, when they look at you, they look at you with this kind of relaxed intent, this kind of uh, abstraction. So. The abstraction of the INTJ's eyes comes from introverted intuition, and introverted intuition is mainly visible in the eyes. First of all, you will notice that gaze of the INTJ starts in the midpoint of the face. That means they focus their eye contact on one specific point. That means they are less likely to wander with their eyes, less likely to dart around, or less likely to uh, look in different directions while they are talking. No, the INTJ holds and fixes their gaze on something, uh, somewhere, some place. At times they might do this kind of scanning gesture where their eyes softly, subtly wander in one direction, carefully. It's like they're searching for something. Like when they're trying to find an idea or pinpoint something, they will slowly peer around the room looking for that point. Now the thing is, due to the relaxation under their eyes, primarily under their eyes, and due to the focus around their foreheads, it's, it's like they look a bit dazed. It looks like they look a bit lost. It's like they're not really present. INTJs, they look as if they're not really present when they are uh, looking around or looking somewhere. It's like they're looking at something, but they're not looking at you. They're looking through you. So it can feel like the INTJ is observing you, but it can also feel like they're looking past you, like you're not really, uh, they're, they're looking at you, but they're actually looking through you, into your soul or past you or into something else. So this is just a sign of how we, when we imagine something, our eyes can wander in the physical world. 
when in reality we are in the abstract world, we are in our imagination. So INTJ is perfectly embodied this. Moreover, if we look at the INTJ's facial expressions, INTJs tend to regard the world in an objective and impartial manner. That means there is less of this whole, oh, that's nice to see you, and oh, uh, I hope you're doing good, and oh, I really like you, and this kind of uh, desire to disarm people or make people relax or make people smile. INTJs don't look at people with the intent of making other people feel good. INTJs don't observe the world in an attempt to uh, paint it or to color it with your own intention or purpose or passion. INTJs, they don't brightly live up the room with their laughter or humor or with their warmth. That's not what INTJs do. Instead, INTJs, when expressing themselves and when looking at the world, cool their facial features down, tense up their cheeks, primarily their cheeks, giving an impartial and neutral expression. INTJs look at the world without any sense of good or bad or any sense of notion of what is right or what is wrong. INTJs purely look at the world trying to see it as it is. That means they keep a neutral composed expression, holding their feelings back inside themselves. You can see in the INTJ some regard of authenticity primarily in their under lip and in this part of the face. That means you can see when you're talking to an INTJ that you're affecting them with your speech. So even though the INTJ is mainly composed and mainly neutral, if you do touch them by saying something that really hits them somehow or hits their uh, honor or sense of justice or sense of uh, ethics or their moral compass, you will see that there's this like uh, visible uh, shakiness, like <laughs> that there's this uh, the jaw drop, this the INTJ jaw drop, which is like you're, you shock them with something, you hit them with something, you affect them somehow by shows of words or something you did. And INTJs, they try to avoid this. INTJs try to keep a neutral expression, try to keep themselves cool, try to keep themselves impartial, but they can be hit by the beauty of the world or by another person, or they can be hurt or visually be shaken when somebody does something that is unexpected or something that will surprise them. Most of the INTJ's facial expressions will start in the midline of the face and mainly in the uh, inner part of the face instead of expanding into the whole face. That means INTJ's don't have strong facial expressions. While an extroverted perceiving type might smile with their entire face and with every part of them, INTJ's tend to have this smile that is more like uh, focused on this part of the face and that, that's because this part of the face um, is less active in an INTJ. Uh, the IJ's facial expressions tend to center around the midpoint of the face and around the nose and the, between the eyes. And this is because INTJs, they try to focus their energy into something or into some place. And also that means when INTJ smiles at you or looks at you or does something or gives some kind of expression, a frown or anything, they do so with intensity. INTJs have an intense energy because it is so focused and because it is so directed. So when an INTJ looks at you or frowns or is angry or upset or gives you this, uh, we call it the kind of the death, INTJ death stare. And we can talk about that in another video. Uh, when an INTJ smiles at you, or yeah, it's like, wow, this energy really hits you because it's so strong and so intense and so focused and so intentional. It's very intentional. Judging energy is very intentional because judgers, they rarely show you anything except what they mean to show you. So INTJs, they compose and control their energy and direct it towards one clear purpose. When you look at INTJ's expressions and gestures, first what you will notice is INTJ's mainly gesture with their palms visible towards the other person. That means you can see the INTJ's palms and their gestures. You can see also that INTJs, they have these swaying motions while they talk. So INTJs, they have this kind of uh, uh, searching, 
uh, palm motion, which is their palms move softly and in round motions rather than uh, in these wavy motions like you see in an ISTJ. Uh, also, INTJs tend to tense up their fingers, so uh, while their palm motions and wrist motions are relaxed, their fingers are more tense and more like this, that gives more effect. INTJs are better at building effect and getting an audience to listen and showing seriousness towards other people. Because an INTJ tends to do this kind of gesture, this kind of, uh, it's like being kind of hit by something, it's like you're grabbing their attention, you're like, uh, making them listen and making them take you seriously. So this is also kind of a more authoritative gesture because it makes people listen to you and makes people more inclined to want to do what you say. INTJs maintain an impartial and serious expression at most times because they want to be taken seriously and they want to maintain control. It is important for an INTJ to maintain this level of control and composure and seriousness because they have goals and ambitions that are very important to them. INTJs work and derive a sense of honor in being able to fulfill a higher duty or higher aim or higher ambition. And so this duty or ambition is the core point of their focus. Most things they do are part of reaching this goal or ambition and this is something very important to them. And that's why it's hard to get an INTJ to smile or relax or calm down or uh, to just unwind because they have this uh, laser focus, this kind of drive, this kind of uh, goal or this kind of intent to everything they do. So if you're able to do that, that's uh, a very amazing and very positive thing. So also appreciate that as an INTJ when other people get you to relax. Also recognize when you're kind of lost in that trance-like NI state. So if you're like lost in this trance-like state where you're not really present, you're not really attentive in your environment, you'll also uh, lose other people. So other people won't hear you, won't see you, won't notice you as easily. So also notice that this can make you kind of disappear. Uh, just as when you detach from the world, the world also in part detaches from you. That means as uh, if you are seeking to have an impact or to achieve a goal or ambition or an end, uh, you sometimes have to take a more attentive energy and have to uh, steal yourself and make sure you pay attention to other people, especially those that are important and those that matter to you. So yeah, that's just a key goal for you. Anyways, that's the INTJ's body language, especially in a flow state of mind or when you're assertive. Um, if you want to see more videos about this or if you want to hear more about the INTJ's body language when stressed or tense or anxious, also leave a comment down below. Or if you want to hear about the INTJ depth stare, let me know what you want to know and uh, subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.